pick the Queen of Pain very early on. Their, uh, their mid player, Barash, he's he's pretty friendly with the old crop, but Shadow Fiend was picked up incredibly fast by them. Liquid initially smoking up here. Five man incursion into the jungle. Now, this Radiant Observer, J4, feels incredibly safe, but with Jirax, can I get the snowball in time? It looks like they will pick one person up and they're chasing. Bata gets the Life Striker right down, and J4 should be dropping here. There's no real way of escape as Matu. Launches out that rocket barrage, but Fata with first blood and a bounty rune. This is going yep. to give him a, a decent start. You know, there were five people sharing the golden experience and things like that. And just look at the fight recap here. You don't get a lot from first bloods when you share it between <laughs> between four people nowadays. So it's going to be mainly the bounty rune that he gets a lot out of. Yeah, and then the uh, the bonus gold from the first blood. So it ends up being like 287. Um... In total there. So that that's pretty nice though in terms of like getting that nice early bottle. She'll be, we'll grab a salve actually. I'm not gonna try and save up for it. I thought she might. Yeah, we've uh we've seen this the majority of the times, you know, as as a leaner or as a queen of pain, you kinda of want that salve so you can play hyper aggressive against someone like a Shadow Fiend. Because you can yeah. trade hits so efficiently and you just you literally just right click them. But then the Shadow Fiend is, you know, forced to buy a salve for himself and is is he gonna bring one out? Looks like he is, yeah. So it's, it's just like a trading of resources and regen, and Fanta knowing that he's ahead, he's always going to have that one up on the SF. So lanes, what are we actually looking at? Cheshire Cat, top Spur Breaker, going to be dealing with Mind Control's Bat Rider. Now, that, that's going to be an interesting one, this matchup. And it's going to come down to the Spirit Break and whether he can turn around to charge away from the bat or not. Mid, the Shadow Fiend against Lena. That's going to be where a lot of the action's happening. I'm pretty sure once the support start rotating off this, Trilane versus Trilane, Matu, Kuroki, as well as Jirax. Facing off against the Wyvern and Witch Doctor and the Slark. Now Slark, similar in respects, uh, in, in some ways anyway, to like an anti-mage safe lane. He requires a good amount of space to farm up his initial items. You know, Treads, Ring of Aquila, maybe a bottle, but then head into your Shadow Blade or Blink. If you can't get that start up and running, you really can struggle to go and find the pickoffs on the supports that you need. Yeah, I'm a little surprised. I guess just because of how hyper aggressive this is, you didn't have really any harass thrown out on Fata, which is uh, pretty rough for Barash, just because, you know, Lena versus SF, not the easiest matchup in the world. Um, so, probably pretty happy that you don't have that Winter Wyvern coming in level 1 and just throwing all kinds of harass at you. Um, <laughs> and then looking at that Sticking Napalm, this is actually a really annoying game for the rating side. You get the pounce that you have to try and line up with Sticking Napalm for the Slark. You've got the raises that you have to deal with. And then, of course, as you mentioned, the escape mechanism for Cheshire Cat, who, speaking of which, is in a little bit of trouble. He might have to charge away here. Yeah, Napalm charges up. Oh, God. Lena has killed off the Shadow Fiend at mid. Missed out on that one. Looking at the Spirit Breaker charging away at top. And now down at bottom lane. The cask is bouncing back and forth. But Fata getting a 1v1 kill there. A little bit unexpected. <laughs> Yeah, I think that just kind of has to deal with that harass. Like, you just always see a support come in when it's a bad matchup like this these days. It just seems to be a big requirement for teams. Um, but the aggro try, forcing the Witch Doctor and the Winter Wyvern to immediately come bottom, and you don't get that same effect. And then you also see with the Star Observer Ward when the Winter Wyvern is moving towards mid. So Shadow Fiend is in, is in a situation where he's losing pretty nastily to this Lena, but also that he can't really have supports freely rotate across. And Kuroki with a haste rune here. He's got Thunder Strike, he's not level 2 just yet. He's gonna go in with a Harass and Fata, you can't dive in behind the tier 1 just yet. Down a bottom lane though, Snowball to try and save Matsumi Man. It looks like it has succeeded as Tron not gonna get in there with too much damage and they've got they've got regen between them, right? Salves, clarities, magic stick charges, the lot. So Liquid should be okay down here for a little while. And Kuroki has left them. From above! Yeah, speaking of regen, Tron sitting there with seven tangos. Uh, Matsumi Man throwing out those flat cannon harass. Something we've been seeing quite a bit lately, in terms of like kind of that new, mostly how you do the gyrocopter. It's just always trying to push them away from your lane. Uh, and not too often we do see him in the aggro tribe these days, I, I don't find. Oh, oh J4, J4. In trouble. he's got the restoration, and actually Tron's gonna go try on Kuroki here, with J4 running back in. They're gonna get the kill on Kuroki first, it looks like. That's that it not doing enough, and Cold Embrace holds the Witch Doctor in place to heal him up, and the Tomb Man can't get the hit in there. There's no kill for Liquid playing very aggressively onto the Witch Doctor. But the sustain they've got on this safe lane tri lane between Voodoo Restoration, Cold Embrace. They just don't have the magic damage to finish it, and now with that little, uh, little bit of slow there, Tron's diving in behind the tier 1. And Snowball should be able to secure this kill onto the Slark, unless the cast can bounce between them perfectly, but not quite. And now it's time for Liquid to turn and fight. J4 slowed by the Sigil. That should be his doom and demise is Big Num. Do they have anything left to finish him off? No. No glimpse, no snowball. So Big Num should be able to escape. 
that just worked out <laughs> so well for Liquid. And now, Cheshire, man, Cheshire Cat and Mine Troll are just like battling it up non stop. Every time I look at the minimap, they're like on top of each other. But it's one's trying to get the bashes, and my Control's just trying to stack up these napalms. It looks like he's in trouble. Oh, oh Fata with the rotation! <laughs> Yeah, that he was pretty easy. Uh, he wasn't expecting that now, was he? Like, he, he hasn't. It should have been. <laughs> that ward. Did he pick up an invis or anything? No, it was a bounty rune. Okay, well, Cheshire Cat. A lot of trouble off the top, does drop. And this gives Mind Control a little bit of time as well to get into that Blink Dagger. Now, we saw the other day where Fortinel had a safe lane Batrider. I think it was against a Clockwork or something. I, I can't quite remember. But he. <laughs> Bambo had like 2,000 gold on Tron, the Rocket Barrage, Mountain Man diving here into the tree line, but Bignum, he's got that Arctic Burn to slow him down, the Snowball will catch him out, but in comes Cheshire Cat, charging across into Matu, and with a couple of hits in, a bash, anything, that's all they need, but Cheshire Cat can't close the gap, and Mountain Man, they're gonna save them out with Fata here, running in, misses the LSA, but still gets the Dragon Slave damage in, and should be Cheshire Cat getting himself out with the charge ready and available as well, maybe looks to turn, but yeah, the Bambo Batrider yesterday for 4 CNL, he died with 2,100 gold, and he bought a Midas, and he still found like a 15-minute Blink Dagger BOTs and like a 20-minute Force Staff and Ghost Scepter on top. It was, it was crazy farm. Yeah, it reminds me of the way that people are running the Beastmaster. It's kind of the same idea where it's this hero that can do a lot with early on farm, like in Beastmaster's case, it's the Necro book, and um, it allows you to kind of build the hero the way you want. Like, um, sometimes when you see S4 run bat in the mid lane, for example, he'll take a few points into the flame break early on, because it helps secure some kills in the mid. Uh, and similarly, if you're running like a mid Beastmaster, you do the same thing with the Axis, right? But when you run him in the safe lane position, you can go full points in the aura, or in this phase, you can go more points into the napalm as well as the fire break, flame break, so he does go down, or sorry, the uh, firefly, but he gets bashed up top. And we lose them. Either way, uh, <laughs> it lets you get the build you want as well as the earlier levels and uh, gold. And you can kind of, you know, get early blink force staff, yada yada yada. Yeah, it's kind of like, you know, the safe lane Queen of Pain. That ride is a lane dominator in a lot of respects. The fact that he can go toe to toe with many, many heroes as Barash is scouted here and faster. Should be able to line up the LSA or not. As the kinetic field doesn't hold in the Shadow Fiend, and now the charge is coming back onto the Tusk. Cheshire Cat's here, and he's hit level 6. He's got the Nether Strike, but a raise finally from Barrage will secure that one. Big Num. They've got the Nether Strike onto Fata now. A couple of raises, but Fata turns back with the Laguna Blade. Shadow Fiend, wrong place, wrong time. That's a killing spree for the Lena, who can now just TP away. That all comes from some very good warding from Liquid, so knowing and understanding. I mean, it's not a big surprise that your Shadow Fiend's going to be doing those stacks in there. Just looking to get aggressive with two heroes that are very good at that early on, so uh, they blow him up. And what's already been a pretty rough early game here, he is leading in terms of the CS, but you've got three Dire heroes on top in terms of net worth right now. And yeah, taking a look at levels, this Trilane versus Trilane scenario, it doesn't really help either team get their levels up on their supports, but I guess if you look at Liquid, the Tusk and Disruptor, they're both pretty good, even pre-level 6. Whereas Witch Doctor and Wyvern, they almost desperately want their ultimates up. You know, Death Ward and Winter's Curse are so, think... so important as top lane. It looks like my control should escape. But uh, yeah, the disables and actual team flight capability you get from Liquid supports early on, I feel are a little bit stronger and offset the fact you are doing an aggro tri lane. Yeah, and it's, it's gone very well. And Slark, I don't know, when you think about Slark, you think about this guy who like, snowballs out of control and. He just kind of pounces on you, and you know you're, you're just kind of instantly dead. But early on, he was just oh, God damn. I, I caught it. I caught it. <laughs> oh, I, good, I good saw. Say. I saw it coming. Twitch chat. I'm not going to be spamming T tours or anything. I've, uh, I've I've missed the kill. I missed the the kill that Fanta got on the Shadow Fiend. But I've been I've been very careful now. I've got to catch every like it's that uh, it's that trigger. Well, you mid know? lane. Oh god, am I gonna miss another one? Barash, no, thank you for pointing it out. Oh, he might escape here, Fata. He's oh, not quite gonna get in there with the hits. That was close. That was very close. Now, Fata's got a Soul Ring. No Yule Scepter. No, uh, no Shadow Blade. Is this gonna be the Bloodstone Rush from the Lena? Ah, uh, that's a good question, but I think my Thumb Man's in a little bit of trouble down here. And he's saved up a little bit by the snowball. He's going to turn back onto Chester Cat with Tron for the Dark Pact and another. Oh, he's not he's trying to get for the 10 seconds. The creep wave. He's got so much damage. The Creep Wave well, soaks up the Rocket Barrage, but in comes Fata. Two man life striker into the Dragon Slave. He's not going to find the kill though. The charge from Chester Cat will slow him down. And they still get the Tusk on the back end. Tron, he's wrapping. 
He's rapping with Cheshire Cat. The Witch Doctor drops, but if they can get faster here, it's all worth it with a bash hitting in and the pounce to latch. I'll take his mega kill streak over on the Winter Wyverns. That's, that's a ton of gold, honestly. How much did he get? Almost 700 from that streak take. <laughs> that was so close. He saw him a double man. He just abandons the fight and runs in the creep wave because he was just one creep. Well, maybe two creeps from six. And there were four creeps at like five HP next to him. And he just couldn't kill them in time. And now he'll have called down. <laughs> Kills one creep and gets it. Uh, that could have turned that fight. They were they were so low when Fata came in. Well, right now, uh, how are we looking at net worth? So, Lina, 4.8k, but she doesn't have the makings of that active item where uh, she can go and play aggressively. Did you look at the Shadow Fiend? Not decided yet, I don't think, what he's going to be... Oh no, he has. He's going to go for the mech. I was just wondering whether, you know, you think about rushing a BKB, you go for the SNY build here. But with Liquid's kind of brawling lineup, the Gyro hitting level 6 now, that, uh, that cooldown can be incredibly oppressive if you're a Shadow Fiend trying to position yourself in a team fight. Especially like here, you're trying to farm your jungle and there's four heroes encroaching into your personal space. Yeah, and these aggressive wards again, just paying off the liquid. They're completely denying them their jungle. Both stacks, even near the mid lane, are kind of warded up and pretty dangerous from the take. And mind control with those early levels, early bots, he can just kind of show up and burn the waves, burn their jungle. And that soul ring build, maybe partially because of that nerf to the Yules, it's not, I mean, it's just not as potent in terms of like solo killing potential. So I can kind of understand that. And then maybe just going into the Shadow Blade and Aghanims and just ignoring possibly Bloodstone as well, but I'm not sure with the nerfs to that, if that's worth it. Yeah, we used to see Bloodstone rushes before. I think Shadow Blade is still in, oh, Cheshire Cat, that snowball, it's not quite gonna get there. And he just keeps on charging until the glimpse will send him back, but it's too far away. Beyond the reach of Fata. Now, tier one of bot gets denied out by Tron. And Jirax, he still wants to battle this one out with the Sigil going across. Who do they choose? There's Big Num on the right, there's Tron on the left. They've got Lao Tzu, but the pounce is down to my control. Looks like Big Num will try and die over to the right hand side, but my control is something very low. Tron is stuck in the static storm. And they get the Slark with the Winter Wyvern. Cheshire Cat. This is deep. This is very deep, but he's going to get a double kill. He finishes off with Summerman with a Nether Strike. And that's well worth it. For, for, the, for the Spirit Breaker, not for the entire team, because they lose a, that's a 4 for 2 trade off there. Yeah, I think. I think he was just getting level 9 on my control, so I think he had like, just skilled up Flame Break, didn't have it out in time to, to stop that charge. That was, man, that was a nice. That was a great Kamikaze play right there. Yeah, Spirit Breaker's like, right, my, my team's pretty much dead. We've lost 3. I've got to make it worth it. He, he's the one hero that got the, got the two heroes trading off there. Now, Shadow Fiend, Mech is on its way, and Fata, he's, he's got 2,000 gold saved up. I wonder if, he always, he's sending the courier to the secret shop, I'm guessing. Or is that just a tusk, getting his Radiant's items delivered? So he hasn't actually, he's just saving gold up, he's hoarding. He's messing with you. He, I mean, he's got blink gold now, but that would be a little bit unusual without the Yule Scepter. Speaking of a mind control, nice, there's that flame break. He was ready this time. <laughs> he's like, fool me once, you know. <laughs> So BOT's bat, gonna uh, try and get himself around the map, split push a little bit more. And with this, you know, you can farm enemy jungle. You can have the Lena sitting in your jungle, farming away in there, and the bat rider control the rest of the map. Now, the charge through is gonna go straight oh, past the top of a man <laughs> who has the cooldown, and he's just gonna walk straight into this fight. He's seen Barash, but he's bashed up here with another strike, and Martu is dead. The rest of the team though is coming in. Liquid, they're gonna get a big trade off here. They get three for the price of that one gyrocopter and a tier one. Now looking to pressure into the mid tier two. It's all about the balance. Liquid not afraid to give up a gyro. He's farming decently. It's it's not amazing. Four thousand net worth. He's still ahead of that slark, but he just gives you so much power at this period of time. Radiance middle tower. Um, it's a little unfortunate there in terms of the supports, right? Like Bignum still not level six. Same thing with the J4, even though he's up here trying to soak some ESP. I mean, they're both close, but you've got Croaky level eight, Jerax level seven and a half, and having some of the Windows Crisp have been a big deal there. They want to actually up on Tron. It looks like he's gonna be a Walrus punch as well. I believe he's gonna die oh, here. Maybe the Walrus punch. But the strike <laughs> will finish him. That was super close, though. Poor little Slarky. So Tron, how many deaths has he got now? What's, what's, what's he at? One, three, and four. But he's got the key components he needs. You know, Treads, Magic Wand, and Ring of Aquila. The next one's oh, just going to be that Shadow Blade or Blink charge forward. Father's bought something. I'm not quite sure what, but he's just going to get bashed up here. And with the glimpse back, maybe they can save him. He takes another hit. And he will drop. 
Yeah, what? it's going bloodstone. Interesting. Okay, so he's got the point booster and the recipe. Okay. Yeah. I guess when you have a disruptor and a tusk and a bat rider, you're gonna kind of rely on them for control, and you just kind of want to play like almost like a sniper, you know, where you're relying on everybody else to hold everybody down while you do your stuff. Maestro's gonna blink in. Oh, look at this! He's getting the stacks, he's getting everything down here. Doesn't even need the lasso, honestly. Yeah, barrage. Mm. Even with the mech, couldn't get time to use it. Stick charges as well. But okay, the 10 to 17 right now. And Liquid are just, you know, we, we often see heroes get these massive streaks and go and uh, just dominate the game. But Liquid are very, it, it just feels very calm from them. Like, they don't seem worried that they lose a Jara or they lose a Lina. Because they are making up for it in so many other ways. The Batrider. Now with, what, 14 minute blink BOTs, can go into a 4 staff very quickly. His progression has been beautiful, honestly. The Lina will have a Bloodstone and that will give her the stability in teamfights. The Mana Regen just to spam spells constantly. And then that AoE heal for the rest of her team. It's just the gyro I'm a little bit worried about, you know. And whether he goes for that BKB rush, I don't think it's it's going to be the best. The fact you've got Nether Strike and Death Ward and Winter's Curse and stuff like that. And the S and Y, we, we've seen him really love that. I can go for the Sand first into the Asher, then Helm of the Dominator. And think about the BKB a little bit later. I heard Slug talking about Oh, he's got the double damage. I heard him talking, he's got the hole, they got the Winter's Curse on the Fata, and with the CD, that should be a simple takedown. Jirax hooked by the Death Ward from Witch Doctor. Now, Arcade, they've grabbed something back. If they can get a Tier 1 here up at top lane, that could really swing things around for them. Yeah, that's a, that's a tactical feeder there from Fata. Again, the Deaths of the Way before the Bloodstone shows up, so... It looks like uh, Mind Control also going for a Bloodstone then, thinking similarly. Uh, <laughs> Can that's hard that, to do that's this. Just a joke. They've glimpsed Cheshire Cat back into the static storm, but it's healed up by the cold embrace. And Matu is trying, he's trying to just skirt around the cold embrace of the rocket barrage. But now this is where Arcade, they really start to kick in. Mech on the SF. Voodoo we'll Restoration and Cold Embrace. Liquid don't have a hero when Lena's dead anyway. So just nuke someone down while they're being healed up. They've got tons of control. They've got lots of damage over time with the you know, cooldown with the rocket barrage and flat cannon. But without the Lena there with the Laguna Blade, actually getting the numbers advantage in these team fights, it's a lot easier for RK to do that. Yeah, I was actually like extremely skeptical of the BKB. And uh, are you going to get more action here? This, uh, he is invis with the Shadow Blade, but I know he's hasted up too. That'll be the bonus damage, right? So I don't know. Maybe a couple lucky bashes, but under tower seems a little risky. Yeah, but, he's just um, gonna, just gonna wait it out here. Yeah, I don't know. I actually thought he was gonna go for the BKB first, because it's kind of that like we're down a little bit, and I need to live through the fights, get off a good requiem here. Uh, but if they are gonna be able to at least stick his five and really continue doing that, like they can't get picked off alone, or this mech essentially becomes useless, right? Uh, and I'm sure he'll build the BKB next. Uh, I don't know. I, I really thought he'd go BKB next, and I was a little skeptical, but I think that's gonna work out fairly well. And how about this farm on Cheshire Cat though? I mean, of course, your Batrider is doing well, but for a Spirit Breaker, 5,200 is pretty respectable considering the, uh, you know, they're down in kills. Usually, it's kind of hard to find this farm when you're losing in the game with someone like the Spirit Breaker. Yeah, for sure. And it comes down to that fight at bottom lane, you know, the fact he gets two big kills in a row definitely boosted his net worth. And now... <laughs> they just popped double smoke. Did you see that? No, I didn't. <laughs> they both they both smoked at the exact same time. Oh, dear. Uh, classic. Well, that's one smoke gone amiss, and they're not going to find anyone with it. There's nobody here. Take a look at this. Tron is down in the southeast, hiding, waiting for the money to get his Shadow Blade. And top lane, there are four heroes from Arcade just grouping up and getting ready. Now, Liquid, if they if they move towards this top lane, maybe they can spot this out. They've got a Dar Observer Ward over in their own jungle, trying to scout out. And they'll see J4 now. And they ping it out, but they don't quite know where everyone else is, and suddenly, suddenly, the pastel colors from the Radiant team appear on the map from, you know, Liquid are like, oh god, oh god, Bob Ross is painting up at top lane. And well, that take was, the tier one. The trajectory was a little odd, wasn't it? Because they had this ward down here, like, in the jungle, uh, yeah. and then they decided to, uh, like, they opted to go that direction despite not seeing anyone there with the smoke, so... Um, at least they did secure that no one was nearby Roche, I suppose, so they'll grab that, you know, the most classic trade in Dota, as they say. Oh, do, they, do they even lose this tier 2 up at top? Uh, Looks like Arcade aren't going to give up on it. There's no minus armor. Yeah, that's true. There's no medallion or any uh, anything to really aid them. And now Cheshire Cat has spotted Batrider and seen him go into the pit. So it's pretty pretty slow. Wave. It's like the slowest Roche I've seen in forever. Where are the sliders? Where are the dazzles? Like, <laughs> where are the, the medallions? Ranger? Like, what is this? <laughs> like, Arcade just took tier 1, tier 2. 
in succession while Liquid get the Roshan. So uh, Lena with the Aegis, and I guess yeah, Bloodstone is up to eight charges. Well, it's it's on eight charges still. I've not lost anything out from that one. But very often we see Liquid do incredibly well at getting their supports farmed up. So Kuroki with Arcanes and 1800 gold, he's, he's got tons of oh, money wow, to actually spend. And, okay, Tron! Static Storm is there as well, that's the perfect setup on the Slark. He should be dropping here. Uh, flame Break and Kuroki securing it. Now this is the issue I had, you know, I mentioned Slark halfway through the draft for Arcade. But the Disruptor was the perfect fifth pick for Liquid to deal with it. You know, you've still got Call Down, Rocket Barrage, LSA and... All of this just spam AoE nonsense that can still hit you in the Shadow Dance. But the fact you've got Lasso into Glimpse, into Static Storm, the Slark has really no options here but to go something like a BKB. It's actually... I, I just... I was so shocked that he got that off, because it's actually so hard to grab a Slark when you're playing Batrider like that, because not only does he have the immediate Dark Pack, but he's also holding a Shadow Blade, and there is a slight delay on Lasso. Like, even if you Blink Shift Q it, like, it is... You know, there is a little bit of a cast animation. So, I don't know. I guess maybe just not looking his hero. They're probably checking the rune or something for the Slark. Not sure. A little little unfortunate there. Well, there's your Batrider 4 staff. So now he's got all the mobility in the world. And Matsu? Yep, SNY is what he's building into. The Shadow Fiend, we've got a full BKB done. And this is... Oh, wow. Okay, we'll, we'll come back to that in a second. So, Arcade, I keep looking at them and thinking they've got these big team fight LTs. They've got the potential to kind of walk into Liquid's jungle, go and you know, pressure and push into Tier 1, Tier 2 towers, which is what Shadowfiend Mech was often used for. You know, you group up as five, you just go and snowball into a location. Take a, t t uh, take a team fight, take an objective, and try and make things go your way. But now the mech is up for Disruptor. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of sustain on Liquid as well, with just that one item. You know, they've got Bloodstone, Mech, and the fact they've got all this mobility sustaining them in the team fight, able to jump around and not get caught out too much. Unless they're hunting for someone in the trees, but I won't find anyone there. Cheshire Cat's charging down to bottom lane. But 1v1 against my summer man. Can, uh, can he do this? Can Cheshire Cat find, it? find the skill with some lucky batches here? He sure can. But in comes Mind Control, and they'll find the lasso back onto that Spirit Breaker. Heals up with Barash on the mech for Tusk Snowball in all oh, to the top of the Wreck Room, but he punches up Barash, cancels out the Wreck Room and kills off Cheshire Cat with the help of Batrider. And now the Wraparound comes in, they're just waiting for this BKB to end as Bata will line up the LSA, and Barash has got nothing left to give. He'll drop, and that is a pretty big little skirmish there for a big little skirmish, yeah, that's exactly what I just said. For, for Team Liquid to now push into the Tier 2. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, just a little bit too aggressive there. It, it, there's just so much movement, right? Like, boots of travel, four staff, blink for mind control. Uh, he can essentially cover half the map in about 10 seconds. And uh, then you're always dealing with phase with Lena. It looks like Tron will snag up Kuroki here. Oh, it's Kuroki for the mech, though. Might keep him alive. Oh, no. Has Kuroki baited this enough? Uh, the flame break? Not quite enough. Oh, the LF thing? No. Tron tried to TP out. Not sneaky enough. Kuroki definitely baited that one for the rest of his teammates to come and uh, sweep up the little Slark. Yeah, it looks like Jerax, he will get charged up here. Do they have the damage this time though? There is a Wonder Scratch if they really want to commit it. I'm not sure, they have another strike. Alright, he's just dead. Yeah, he's, uh, he's long gone. But Cheshire Cat now has no Shadow Blade and no charge, but he does have a teammate behind him with the Glimmer Cape. I'll save him from the nasty gyrocopter. So Fata has Shiva's Guard done, right? Pretty much. Just needs a little bit more for the recipe. And Aegis is expiring in about a minute or so. Yep. So they've got a minute to utilize this Aegis, but I think it's just going to be spent, you know, farming and making sure you control all the map. Force push all these lanes out. Like bot lane, Power Rangers, they know they need to control this. They've got to farm up on the Shadow Fiend and make sure that he gets some secure time building up his net worth. Because... Shadowfiend likes being 2 or 3k net worth ahead of his counterparts or ahead of any hero on the opponent team. Right now Radiant's he's behind the Lina. Is under attack. Yeah, you basically want to be like top dog <laughs> when you're playing SF. And uh, we just haven't really gotten that big Requiem fight, you know, when the BKB comes out you generally want to get that massive little engagement where you wipe three heroes or something and now my control, he's... oh, they can't find him. Oh, he's got the gem, so guess the wrong direction on that one. And just yeah. our cat will make it out. Spirit Breaker was out of there. The one kind of shining light I see here for Arcade is the Witch Doctor is very close to his Ags. He's about 1500 away from completing it. And honestly, Arcade's high ground defense is close to impregnable, right? They've got Winter's Curse, Splinter, uh, Splinter Blast, Cast, Death Ward, Shadowfiend Razors, and then the fact that Slark can go hunting for supports in the background. 
pushing up high ground here for Liquid. They need a team fight and they need Aegis, I, I feel, to go and take yeah. a tier 3 in ranks. The only thing they're missing really is that like Ember Spirit or a Spectre or a Morphling or something that can be farming lanes, you know, while while uh, the rest of the team's kind of defending, then immediately come in for the actual fight. Um, so maybe if they can hem them in, it wouldn't be the worst thing for Liquid simply because they they won't really have anyone who'll be getting anything. It's my control. Does get cursed up here. Yeah, you're right. Looks like it'll just drop, but that's two ulties used up for him. And now the rest of the team, but the man is shredded by Tron and Barrage, and Kuroki is not going to have a luckier time. One more hit from the Shadow Fiend is all they need, but he's walked in the fountain here. Charged back with another strike, and Cheshire Cat glimpsed away from Kuroki will save him. But Lena still going to go down, and Power Rangers. Okay, four, what was it, three for zero, nearly four for zero. But that was really, really spread out from Liquid. They TP'd back, they were kind of hesitating on how they should engage. Yeah, that was really well done by Victim, because uh, I first, uh, I mean, I, you could probably hear it in my voice, it's like, uh, your Windows is a bat, like, up on the high ground with no one nearby, but simply because they can't get that lasso and the four staff off, like, that's a huge part of how Liquid's been winning these fights, like, it's the immediate delete, right, from the Laguna Blade, Shiva's, or something like that, so, uh, extremely well played there, just it's a good game sense by Victim to understand that as long as the bat rider is dead, like, it's gonna be a pretty hard engagement for Liquid over here, and it's gonna result in this tower. And I don't think there'll be any sort of a repercussion for this whatsoever. No, it doesn't look like it. But yeah, uh, Liquid was really traversing through the Radiant Jungle and looking for the big wraparound onto this Tier 1 tower. But mm -hmm. then they TP'd like one hero to Tier 2, one another hero, and then Kuroki TP'd back, and then they kind of had this split where they were 2 and 3. 2 coming from the back, 3 coming from the front. And the way the arcade positioned, and they were sort of, you know, going back and forth in this area, not committing to anything. Meant the liquid couldn't go for that. Just all in, we'll surround you. We'll come in from one direction and we'll take the team fight. They had to go for this kind of split, right? We'll uh, we'll backstab you a little bit. Come in from the front with a big brawling heroes as well. But arcade, we're ready. And like you said, that winter's curse is pretty damn good. And that fight has given Witch Doctor the Aghanim Scepter. Level two ulti. Aghanim's up. Things are looking rough for Team Liquid, honestly. Yeah, well the one thing they do have is unbelievable map control, like Batrider, and having the gem on top of them, you can see there's actually only one ward in the inventory of Bigdom, and there's none in the shop, so the D wardings have been extremely real here from mind control, and, oh, speaking of D wardings, you see this observer down here on the bottom lane, in between the two sentries? That's frustrating. Oh, the other one just died, but either way, um, just some sneaky wards. I mean, I've kind of been pointing out the aggressive wards the whole game for Liquid, but they have been very well placed. And uh, Batrider, definitely one of those vision heroes, although he's not often thought of one, I guess. Um, he's definitely one of the best gem carriers, like right up there with Night Stalker. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, Barash, looks like he's gone from BKB now into the, I'm, I'm guessing, Skadi here for the Shadow Fiend. It's kind of the regular item, you know, maybe you point out Lincoln's, uh, Lincoln's Sphere just because there's Bat and the uh, uh, Lasso from him, Glimpse from Disruptor, Laguna Blade from the Lina. But Scotty's just going to allow you to tank up a ton. Very good against the Gyro, the fact you can kind of kite him around in a team fight. And without a BKB, he's going to be susceptible to all this, you know, cask bouncing around, and he won't be able to get into position to really do too much damage wise. But the supports on, on the arcade, they're getting relatively farmed up here. You know, the Spirit Breaker slowed down a little bit in his progression, but BKB before 30 minutes, which is what he's aiming at, is still pretty amazing on top of the Shadow Blade. Yeah, uh, it's so good this game. Like, Fata not opting for the early eggs. Uh, he is heading towards it now, it would seem, at least unless it's going to be like Octarine Chorus and Shannon that from Rear Blood Zone, who knows, but... Um, it, it, we saw how much control he offered on top of Fata. <laughs> That's why I get the charge through, Death of Strike, a couple bashes as well, like, you can't do anything uh, with this guy. And once that BKB's out, it's basically going to be Walrus Punch and Lasso that you'll be looking to commit over on the Spirit Breaker, trying to interrupt the Nether Strike, so... I could see that really trying to turn these fights. A lot of it's probably going to have to do with Kuroki, and he doesn't have that Blink Dagger that we see a lot of Disruptors opt for right now. At first it was a little unusual, but just seeing all these Blink Static Storms, Blink Glimpses, I've really come to appreciate the item on the hero, so um, I was a little surprised to see him actually go for the mech, because he's one of the guys I've been seeing pick up this Blink Dagger, and it's going to make it a little bit harder. Like, Static Storm doesn't have the biggest range for casting. Yeah. I, I even wonder what he goes for next. Like, if, if he does save up for the Blink, or if you start thinking about Aghanim Scepter now. Because Greaves would be okay here. I don't think it's going to be an amazing item for you, just the fact that there's not that much to dispel. No. But if you can get the Aghanim Scepter, stopping BKB, stopping you know, Shadow Blade BKB from Slark, and uh, it could be, the, could be the Tide Swinger in these team fights. And then you look at the triple BKB now. Spirit Beggar Slark and the Shadow Fiend 
all have that magic immunity ready. And with the aggressive party leaving the Radiant side of the map, Tron Shadowbladed up. The three other heroes. Just going to try and wrap around from the north. But Liquid, they're all grouped around their ancient pit. The Alpha Wolf is stacking up, building things here. With Tron spotted out there with the Observer Ward well placed there by Kuroki. Just scouting vision of it. I think they know that the aggression's coming onto this tier 2 at mid. I mean, look at the wards from Liquid. I mean, they can just tell, like, where like where are they? Like, they're not pushing the side lanes. Uh, they have lost a couple in the jungle, so they're not fully aware of that. But the Radiant just... Uh, it's a lot difficult, or a lot more difficult for them to understand where Liquid is. But the, I think they spotted some Firefly there. Yeah. Looks like they did. And now they know there's an Observer Ward over in this area. Slark realizes... Hang on a second. <laughs> This oh, this is happening. Is... They can see us. Oh, the big nump. Send back. He's going to take taken out. There's no winter's curse just yet. It looks like they want to try and fight with the buyback from the winter wide, but and in comes the death ward. Bouncing back between Jerk, Marty now onto Fata. They've done a ton of damage with this and just trying to drag Barash back with my control. But at this point, the BKBs are just too strong here. Liquid can bring the Tusk back into the game with the help of that little bit of gold. And Tron under the guise of invisibility, the Shadow Blade scouted out by that sentry and back into the Static Storm, but the Cheshire Cat bashes up with a charge of the Kuro. Raccoon will slow them down, but Tron is still alive. The Cold Embrace keeps him up and running, and now he's in that Invis again. Farta trapped here and denies himself with the Bloodstone. We have Liquid just losing hero after hero. And with Roshan alive, it's got to be Arcades. Yeah, I don't know. Wow, that was such good game sense from Arcade to go into that fight after immediately losing the Winter Wyvern. I, I think a lot of teams would have would have ran. I, I was thinking they were going to disengage, but having the Death Ward from the river just, uh, you know, knowing what an advantageous position that was for J4, oh, they turned that. that fight into a big, big advantage for them. And now Mind Control in quite a bit of trouble. And this is like, this is one of those points where levels are just so massive. He would have Lasso right now if he was level 16, but now he's to wait 15 more seconds. And they could have possibly gotten this Roche because of it. And he was so close to 16 before that fight all started. Well, I'll lose out on that one. And now you're looking at Barash with Scardi done. Aegis up on him. Tron with Scardi not far away either. Now they're looking at this course, suddenly tanking themselves up massively. Liquid, they've got lots of control. You know, we said this a lot in the, in the draft. They've got Glimpse and Snowball and everything in between. But the fact they don't have a raw right-click physical damage carry, they don't have a massive amount of nuke damage outside of that Lina. They've kind of gone for the spread of like, you know, we've got a bit of this, a bit of that, but there doesn't seem to be a drive or, or a direction for their draft or their uh, actual team fights, you know? Maybe they want to try and pick off one hero at the start. They, a lot of their heroes are very good at engaging and chasing, but not very good at continual sustained team fights, whereas Arcade is like the complete opposite. They go in, and they sustain. Yeah, and maybe that is why Kuroki did go for the Guiding Greaves, trying to work on that sustain, um, and trying to boost that perk of their draft up, but... I don't know, I, it just seems so strange. Like, I feel like the Agnum Scepter almost does seem like a necessity because of all these BKBs, but if you're not going to get that, like, obviously you have to at least hit the Stack Storm, as they do grab Tron as well as the Call Down. All right, it's well, it's a BKB, BKB, though, so... Adios, amigos. Um, I don't know, like, it's just... If you can't hit a good stack storm, I can understand that, and then that makes me think like you better get the blink dagger. So the greaves, although I don't know, it's pretty expensive, like sixteen hundred gold just to combine your mech and your arcanes, and then get that nice little. I know it's a nice aura, but there's really not much of a dispel uh, exactly. function going on here. So like, Jerax is in trouble bottom. Often when you see the guardian greaves, it's because you know a tide hunter or a dark seer wants to dispel a global silence or, or something, you know? You, you just want to get rid of that silence and Orchid, but... Is Jurax gonna charge, charge. TP away? Okay, well, he, he gets out of that sticky situation somehow. Not quite sure what was going on there, but Arcade, they're ready to pressure into Tier 3s. And unlike Liquid, they have the Shadow Fiend who can go and stand up on high ground and just wail into the tower. They've got heroes behind him who can you know, keep him alive, keep him sustained, and... With a Death Ward, and they can place that down and stop or deter Liquid from really running in and team fighting. Trying to do as much damage as they can to Barash here. And the BKB stopping the glimpse, they're not going to drag him back. And Arcade looks like they'll just disengage and walk back to defend top lane. Right, there we go. There we go. Ags for Lina. Yeah, and that's probably why these Scotties are coming out, right? Just <laughs> go for that raw HP uh, up against the the pure damage that's going to be coming out from that. And now quite a bit of pressure here as they are smoked up. This is going to be a massive fight. 
This could be game deciding. Oh, fuck, they walk straight into it. He gets the LSA onto two. The Bash Requiem is hit by the Raguna Blade, and it looks like he will drop the Aegis to the Death Ward deck and then get onto Jirax, but nothing much else. Vignum will get focused down, but Bata is still getting shredded by Tron, who no longer has a BKB though. He's trapped in Static Storm, and they'll find him, but the Slark is dead, and Barrett has no agents left. Liquid, they're finally getting a team fight that's decent for them, but the Pummel Man is slowed by the Scardi, looking to turn back onto Trisha Cap, and that cask is just causing havoc, bouncing back and forth, oh. but that's four, and they're not going to get a fifth. Cheshire Cat is long gone, but Team Liquid, oh my goodness, without buying back, they had the high ground advantage, and... They just played that perfectly. I mean, if you lose that fight, you probably lose mid racks. Yeah. So that's, I mean, that's just huge. And well done. I don't think our uh, arcade obviously they were smoked up coming in looking for that nice little bit of a pickoff. Probably hoping Matumba Man might be near the uh, the ancients with maybe some of the other teams split pushing, but unfortunately it was everybody. So well done by Liquid. And now there's really no buybacks except for Slark. This at least tier three dead. All of a sudden, okay, go from. Go from pressuring enemy tier 3 to having to defend their own. Goodness. It looks like this tier 3 might just drop here. Without Shadow Fiend, like Winter Wyvern and Witch Doctor alive in a couple of seconds time. They're focusing the melee racks, they know the glyph has just been used. Melee racks should fall, then they back themselves up, or they're going to go for the full lane. Full lane, okay, hit, okay. Shadow Fiend's dead for 5, he's going to have half souls when he respawns. Full lane it is, with the nice. Aegis up coming in, Bata Laguna Blade rips up Bata Witch Doctor, and now the Snowball to save them all. They get the last door with the Trinus, but no dark back here. I don't know if they can focus him down though, with Kuroki still wandering around, Static Storm is up, he's gonna have to throw it soon though, on top of Tron, oh no! Lane <laughs> pushes them all out, and now Masu's caught in the curse, he's just go in. Finish off the range rank. You're probably gonna drop here, but actually, looking at this, Shadow Fiend and the Sloth are both dead without buyback. On the SDF, Tron has to come back into this. Fez is gold up. Cheshire Cat is trapped in the kinetic field and we got taken out as well. But Liquid, they only lose one hero. And honestly, the Guardian Greaves is keeping them alive. That aura though. And what do you I do now, Arcade? Are you just going <laughs> to die and die again? Cheshire Cat gets dropped. And this could be a second lane of racks here for Liquid. If they move down to bottom lane, top top lane is pushing in though, naturally, with the creep wave. So that's going to be a relatively simple tier 3. I don't know, like they're all, they're full HP. I mean, it might just be the call soon, honestly. Bato's back in because of the Bloodstone respawn. And then Shadow Fiend's going to have 15 souls when he respawns. He's not going to have a big wreck room. He's not going to have anything, really. That's a second lane of racks for Liquid, and all of a sudden it's like they flick the switch, they win two team fights in a row and the game is over. Okay, getting caught without <laughs> buybacks, goodness gracious me. Yeah, I mean they don't even have like a base taking team, honestly. Like, they get the machine gun Lena, I suppose, but it's they, there's no time. Like, they could have got no raw damage out, but like, like you said, apart from this Lena, who walks into the Shadow Fiend here, Scardy Slow, but they've got the lasso there. To try and control up Barash and his cooldown will slow him down. I don't think there's much way out of this. It's Tron without buyback this time. A good game well played is called. Game number one goes to Liquid. But honestly, I I was biting my nails there for Liquid. And I think Power Rangers thought we've got this. We, we've got this. Uh, but Liquid, they, the first 25 minutes was cool, calm, collected. They don't, they don't mind if they feed away a few kills here or there. But Arcade were close. I just caught the graph before it did the little flat line at the end there, and there was about a 20,000 gold swing in the past seven minutes. So. Oh, man. So there you go.